So you said you and your son together yeah. entered the Catholic Church. Yes. What was that like, the that two of you? To- un- incredible. Yeah, that was an incredible experience. Uh, the To be, uh, you know, he, again, he, he became, he followed me into the Episcopal priesthood. Uh, uh, he went to uh, A&M for his undergraduate work and then went to the same seminary that I went to and then became a, an Episcopal priest and was assigned to a couple of parishes before he was with a younger group of clergy uh, in Fort Worth, the Episcopal Diocese, who were also working together to come into the Catholic Church, you know. And uh, so he was, he, was, he was part of that whole group, and it just happened that we were in the same sort of uh, cadre of priests or seminarian and then becoming priests, being ordained together at the same Mass. And there's a wonderful story I heard that when our dossier, our file, if you will, was sent to Pope Benedict for his uh-huh. approval, once our formation was completed, once we, you know, you got to go through psychiatric uh, um, uh, evaluations mm-hmm. and uh, oral canonical or, you know, oral tests and all this kind of stuff. Background gotta, checks and sure all of that. that. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. that you've got your theology correct and that yes. you're up to speed to be a Catholic priest. Academically and otherwise, I would think the scrutiny would be a little more. It's a little more. It yeah, can be so. in certain areas. It's uh-huh. a little intimidating, even if somebody is older than I, older than as old as I was. Uh-huh. But it was intimidating. I felt like a a kid again. <laughs> but but the, the, our dossiers were actually taken to Pope Benedict and put on his desk together, and they opened them up. Wow. Together for him, and they said, "Now, uh, Holy Father." This is the father and the son that are be ordained. And they said he just laughed that's, and then signed both documents to order a, the, but he, he, he signed ours together, you know. That's amazing. And we were ordained together again. There, there are other, uh, father and son Catholic priests. Uh huh. But it's like mom dies and then dad becomes a priest later. Mm, okay. That kind of thing. Yes. I, I know there's a few of those in Europe. Okay. Uh, I don't know in the United States there may be. I don't, I don't know, but but being ordained in the same mass that's a different yeah. different animal, and that hasn't happened for over a thousand years or almost a thousand years. That's amazing. Now remember that in the early church, priests could marry. You know. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. The, the, I mean, Peter was married. Uh-huh. You know, and and so you you do have, but uh, celibacy didn't become didn't become uh, uh, the the stable that it is the staple that it is I should say. Until a little a little bit later, you know, but the fact is that to be ordained with your son, uh, I mean, I remember being interviewed by the Associated Press just like this. Yes, and we, he was right beside me. And we were being asked all these questions, I, and it was it was surreal. I'm sitting there with my son uh-huh. talking about being ordained a Catholic priest. You know, it was it, it's a, it, a a wonderful gift, and I have to say, I'm 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 uh, prejudiced. He's a fine priest. <laughs> you know, he's done very well at, at, at Our Lady of Walsingham. 